Hi, I'm Steve G. Jones, clinical hypnotherapist, and I want to tell you a little bit about myself before we get started. I have a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Florida, a master's degree in education from Armstrong Atlantic State University, and a doctorate in education from Georgia Southern University. I'm a certified clinical hypnotherapist, a member of both the American Board of Hypnotherapy and the National Guild of Hypnotists, and I'm president of the American Alliance of Hypnotists. I'm the director of the Steve G. Jones School of Clinical Hypnotherapy. I also serve on the board of directors of the American Lung Association in Los Angeles. I have over two decades of experience in hypnotherapy, and I still maintain a busy practice and teaching schedule because I see clients and teach classes worldwide. My client base consists mainly of people who want to lose weight, stop smoking, or gain confidence. Other clients include sales teams interested in boosting motivation and increasing income. Also, singles looking for love, insomniacs desiring proper sleep, and actors desiring more confidence for their next audition. When I travel to see clients and teach hypnotherapy certification classes around the world, I visit such places as Tokyo, Japan, Barcelona, Spain, Paris, France, London, England, Montreal, Canada, Los Angeles, California, and New York, just to name a few. By the way, since you have an interest in hypnosis, perhaps you'd be interested in becoming a certified clinical hypnotherapist. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go to my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com, and click on Hypnosis Classes at the top. You can either train in person or online. After your training, you'll be added to our worldwide directory of certified clinical hypnotherapists, and you'll receive a certificate. I was fortunate for many years to have my office in Beverly Hills, California, where I worked with such wonderful people as Tom Mankiewicz, the writer of Superman, Geraldine Saunders, the writer of The Love Boat, and many other celebrities. I have been interviewed on CNN, Fox News, and appeared on True TV, in addition to having my own hypnosis TV show. With my over 20 years of experience, I'm happy to share with you techniques that I've both developed and learned which can help you improve your life. I encourage you to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. There you will find my life's work, 22 books on hypnotherapy, over 3,000 hypnosis recordings available as downloadable MP3s or CDs, and these recordings will program your mind to achieve goals in such areas as weight loss, motivation, and stopping smoking. I also have audiobooks, such as this one, where I'm talking with you and sharing with you in a very dynamic way techniques that you can use to improve your life and the way you do things. The reason I'm telling you all of this is not to impress you, but to impress upon you that I, your teacher, am very capable and I know what I'm talking about. I'm also very happy for the opportunity to share this information with you. So rest assured that you're in good hands and let's have some fun as we now expand your knowledge. I wish you well in all of your endeavors and please be sure to visit my website, betterlivingwithhypnosis.com. I want to give you a guide that you can use to open your third eye. And my hope is that with this recording, you will go beyond just an intellectual academic understanding of opening your third eye and really move into the experience of opening your third eye. So not just learning about it and hearing about it and perhaps being able to recite information about it, but actually doing it. And in order to do this, you're going to have to exercise some muscles, if you will, that you probably wouldn't ordinarily exercise. Now, these are not physical muscles that I'm talking about, but they are actually going to yield results that you will be able to see. Once you have developed them, you're going to find that, that everything becomes easier for you in the world of psychic work. And no matter what else you're studying, the exercises that I'm going to present you with are going to come in very handy. I believe that really taking part in something and doing it, not just observing it, not just hearing about it, but actually doing it, that's what's going to bridge the gap between where you are and where you want to be in your ability to use your third eye. So I am not asking you to just accept what I say without checking it out. I'm inviting you to take what I say and use what I say and go through the exercises and see for yourself how this works. Now, you'll be happy to know that you don't need to have any background in order to do this. 
There's nothing that's a prerequisite for this course. No matter what your level of psychic ability is, you're going to gain a tremendous amount from this program. In fact, I would suggest that you just let go of what you've learned for now. You've learned a number of techniques, perhaps, about how to increase your self-awareness and how to use your third eye. But I'd like you to put those aside because just like an employee who's been trained by another boss to do things that boss's way, it's not really going to benefit me much if I'm trying to train you to do things the way that I would like you to do them and you're still doing them the way the other person taught you to do them. Or, as is often the case with people I train, perhaps you've had many bosses, perhaps many people have taught you how to use your psychic abilities and open your third eye. And I just want you to let go of all that. I just want you to suspend everything that you've ever learned about opening your third eye. Just put it aside, put it on the back burner. You can pick it up after this program's over. But for right now, I'd like you to start with a clean slate with me and just hear what I have to say and apply what I tell you and do it without your other knowledge. So if you know a quote unquote better way to do it, just let go of that for now and try it my way. Afterwards, you can return to the other way if you want, or perhaps you'll combine my way with the other information you have, or perhaps you'll start doing it my way. Now, when I say my way, of course, my way is a culmination of my years of spiritual training and spiritual self-study. But I believe that my system is very powerful and helpful. And I also believe that you'll get the maximum benefit from it by just following my system during the course of this program and trying it on for size. Now, I want you to realize that one of the goals that I have in this program is to teach you about yourself and to have you see the world from the point of view of yourself and to let go of relying on your physical, mental faculties to see the world and to really tune in to seeing what's going on through yourself. Now, that's going to make more sense as you go through the program. I also want you to realize that this is meant to be sort of an introduction to using your third eye, to opening your third eye, to really getting in tune with yourself. I hope that from this point forward, you add tremendously to your knowledge. Don't let this be the last thing you learn. Always seek more information afterwards. I also want to say that I separate myself from what's been called recently, when I say recently, I think probably since the 1980s or so, what's been called the New Age Movement. At least that's when I became aware of that term in the early 1980s, the New Age Movement. So I want to tell you that my biases are against the label New Age. I believe that the teachings that I'm going to share with you are ancient, if anything, and they're anything but new. Before we go further, I want to tell you my personal story about how I became interested in spiritual work. I was sent to military school, a school named Riverside Military Academy. Riverside Military Academy is a wonderful school. It was one of the top five military schools in the nation, at least at its time when I was there in the early 80s as a high school student. And I didn't want to be there. Although it was a great school and I learned a lot of interesting things there, I didn't want to be there. I was sent there because my grades weren't so good. In ninth grade, I chose to talk to the girl next to me in algebra class rather than pay attention to what the teacher was saying in algebra. The only thing that I did do reasonably well in ninth grade was wrestle. I was on the wrestling team, but unfortunately that wasn't good enough to get my grades up to where they needed to be. In fact, that probably even pulled them further away from where they needed to be. So anyway, I found myself in military school in 10th grade. And there I stayed from 10th through 12th grades. And my grades did improve, but I also felt a little trapped. I felt isolated and I felt trapped because my home where my parents lived was in South Florida and the military school was in North Georgia. So I was pretty far away, geographically speaking, I was pretty far away from home. I was far away from the friends I had grown up with, but I was able to make new friends. However, there was always that feeling of isolation and that feeling of being trapped there in the military school. So I was always looking for ways to escape. We would go AWOL, which means absent without leave. And AWOL refers to any time you leave, in this case, the campus without permission. So when nighttime came around, a few of us would sneak out and run off into the woods 
And during the weekend, a few of us would do that also. And I found a little bit of escape there. But what I really wanted was a mental escape. So I started studying about psychic phenomenon. I started studying about astral projection. I started studying about opening the third eye. I started studying about clairvoyance, clairaudience, because all of these things interested me and they provided an escape from the reality that I had been sent to. What I discovered was that my abilities developed rather quickly. And one of the reasons is that I was very focused on getting results. I wanted nothing more than to at least divert my attention from the immediate situation. And my ultimate goal was to liberate myself, at least spiritually, from that situation. I started studying a series of books by Dr. Tuesday Lobsang Rampa. He was a Tibetan monk who wrote probably about 15 books, and I was able to find most of them. They're a little difficult to find these days because I believe they're out of print, but there are still some copies floating around. He had a wonderful way of telling stories about his life as a Tibetan monk and as a medical doctor. He was a Tibetan monk and a medical doctor. He had a wonderful way of weaving into his stories interesting and fascinating lessons about such things as opening the third eye. In fact, if you're able to get your hands on this, I recommend the book You Forever. The book You Forever talks about a lot of topics that have to do with spirituality, but one of the things it talks about in particular is the third eye. In fact, I believe Dr. Rampa wrote a book called The Third Eye or something along those lines, so you may want to look him up. Dr. Tuesday Lobsang Rampa, a wonderful teacher. He has since crossed over into spirit, but he was able to, through his writings, impart to me the information that I needed to develop myself so that I would have the powers that I needed to have some sort of an escape. And so a lot of the information that I'm going to share with you is information that I initially learned as a teenager in military school. Later, through years and years of self-development and going to seminars and teaching people and learning from my students, I was able to refine what I had learned and make it something that is easily teachable, something that I can explain, something that I can stand behind because I've done it myself, and something that I can teach other people to use in a practical way. With all that being said, let's jump into the material so that you can learn how to open your third eye. So I believe that the essence of any spiritual work should be to discover yourself and learn more about yourself. And so treat this just that way. Treat it as if you're learning more about yourself. Let go of the idea of forcing yourself to learn. Let go of the idea of making yourself learn and just embrace the idea that you're developing yourself. So rather than forcing, what you're doing is just becoming aware. Realize that you are discovering something about yourself that's already there. It's not as if you have to create something or invent something or make something happen that's not a natural part of you. All you have to do is discover yourself. That's what opening your third eye is all about. In the physical world, if you want to achieve something, you often have to try really hard to get it. And that makes it exciting because that's part of what we're here for, to try really hard to get what we want, to develop ourselves, to compete sometimes, to really enjoy the, the thrill of the chase and the competitive nature of certain things. But in the spiritual world, it's different. All you have to do is open your mind to the possibility that it can come to you. And by the way, those who have learned a neat trick realize that when you want something in the physical world, you can manifest it spiritually and it can show up in the physical world. That was the premise of the book that I wrote with Frank Mangano. You can attract it using the law of attraction to get what you want. Having studied this idea of manifesting what we want in the physical world through spiritual thoughts, my co-author Frank Mangano and myself were able to bring a spiritual lesson which yields physical results. So once you rise above even the striving in the physical world, then you find that you have transcended. But in the meantime, it's kind of fun and kind of exciting to strive in the physical world to do things. It's part of the growing process. It's part of what we all go through. So let go of the idea of transcending every single physical thing that you have to strive for because some of that can be fun, some of it can be exciting, some of it is what you're here to do. 
but realize that there is a higher path when it comes to developing gifts of a spiritual nature. These gifts have already been given to you, such as being able to open your third eye. It's already been given to you. You just have to realize it. You just have to open the package. And it doesn't take physical effort to do so. It just takes an understanding, a belief, and the application of that faith. Now, along those lines of not forcing anything, I don't want you to make anything up when you visualize. I don't want you to cause yourself to see something that's not really there. Sometimes we force ourselves so much because we want to see something. We want to get those results. I see it with my hypnotherapy patients all the time. They want to be in a deep state of hypnosis, so they try. I don't know exactly what they do when they try, but they try, they struggle. I can see them grimacing sometimes, trying to get into a deeper state of hypnosis. And I tell them, relax, just allow it to happen. Same thing I'm telling you about opening your third eye. Just relax and allow it to happen. Here's a challenge. And this arises from forcing yourself to visualize. If an entity actually appears to you, how are you going to know the difference between the actual entity and the entity that you force your mind to create through your imagination? That's where forcing yourself really hurts you. You try and you try and you try to see something you think you should see, and then the actual vision shows up. And because you forced yourself to see it so many times, your creative mind has produced it. Now when the actual vision shows up, you don't know the difference between the actual vision and the forced quote unquote reality. This is the importance of just relaxing and letting it come to you. If I could sum it up in one word, I would just say awareness, because awareness doesn't rely on trying or striving or forcing. It relies on just opening your third eye, becoming aware, and taking advantage of the faculty that's already there. The ability for you to see in a spiritual way is already there, just like opening your eyes in the morning. You can see light. You can see everything around you. That's all you really have to do, but I'm going to teach you how to do that. I also want you to trust yourself and trust what you're seeing. And this holds true as long as you're not forcing yourself. If you're just relaxing and allowing awareness to happen, I want you to trust what you're seeing. There was a study done in Stanford at Stanford University in California where they had two people, one in each room, and one person in one room had to do something or wear something or do something out of the ordinary. And the other person in the other room had to guess what was going on, what that person was doing. Well, in many cases, the person who was guessing what was going on was guessing accurately, but they were dismissing their answers. They would say things to the researcher such as, well, I think so-and-so is doing such-and-such, but that's ridiculous, so I'm not going to go with that. Here's my actual answer. They would dismiss the real answer and choose an answer that wasn't accurate because they didn't trust what their mind was simply showing them. In other words, they rejected reality. The reality was what their mind was showing them, but they thought it couldn't be that simple, it couldn't be that easy, and it certainly couldn't be whatever it was they were seeing, so they rejected it. I don't want you to fall into that trap. I want you to avoid that trap. So let go of forcing and accept what you see. Also, I want you to let go of analysis. You know, so many people put a judgment on things that they see. They look at something, they have a perception, and they want to categorize it immediately because it has to fit into a pre-designed box, doesn't it? I mean, doesn't everything? Well, we like things to fit into a pre-designed box or a template. We like to categorize things. But I want you to let go of that because part of transcending, part of becoming truly aware is accepting things just as they are. When you categorize something, you strip away some of its uniqueness and you put it in a big box full of other things that are kind of like it, but not exactly. You take away the uniqueness of what you are experiencing. So let go of making those judgment calls. Another point I want to make is you need to protect yourself psychically. This is done very easily. All you have to do, and this is the first exercise I'm going to teach you, all you have to do is sit quietly and imagine a white light surrounding you, a pure white light. That's it. It couldn't be any simpler. Just imagine a pure white light surrounding you. Anytime you do work with visualization or any other type of psychic work, you need to initially imagine a white light surrounding you. Another point I want to emphasize is the need to practice, the need to apply what I'm saying. Although I want you to let go of the idea of forcing yourself, I do want you to make time to do the exercises that I'm teaching you, even something as simple as surrounding yourself with the white light. 
By doing this, you're going to get used to it and you're going to customize it. You're going to make it yours because it's one thing to understand a concept intellectually. It's another thing to actually apply it. So when you sit down quietly and close your eyes and imagine a white light surrounding you, it's going to be a different experience for you than it would be for me. It's going to be an individual experience. You need to experience it. It's just like skiing. If you talk about skiing, that's one thing, and you may have a good intellectual understanding of it, but when you go to actually ski, it may be a completely different story. Although you think you have it down, maybe you don't. And maybe the first few times, it doesn't go as smoothly as you thought it would. So practice is very important. That's how you're going to develop proficiency in the things that I'm going to teach you. I would recommend about 20 minutes per day. I also want you to start right away. Start today. Everything that you learn today, no matter how far you go in this recording, everything that you learn today, go ahead and practice today. I also want you to experiment a little bit with the techniques. Make them yours. Feel free to make changes and tweaks in them to make them yours so that they work for you. And it's also my hope that you will study other techniques that you can incorporate into opening the third eye so you can make it part of a large body of information that you have. I want to share with you a technique that I learned some years back, which was very powerful for me when I first learned it. And it has to do with working with the throat. And what you're looking for is a sound that you can create by closing your throat just a little bit. Let me give you an example of how it would sound. That's me exhaling. That's me inhaling. Now here's how I would normally sound exhaling. And here's how I would normally sound inhaling. But again, with my throat a little closed, let me share the example one more time. This is me exhaling. My throat's a little closed there. This is me inhaling. Now, how am I making that sound? Mainly by raising my tongue a little bit in my throat. I'm raising my tongue a little bit so that it closes off the passage a little bit. When I say close your throat, it's not actually a circus trick. It's not something that you have to spend years developing. And your throat is not closing per se. It's your tongue that's moving up just a little bit to narrow that gap, to narrow the opening, so that when you breathe in, there's some resistance and there is some sound. You can breathe through your nose or your mouth. Either will be fine. I just wanted to make it more dramatic for you so you could hear me breathing through my mouth in both of the examples so that you could really hear what was going on. Your lower jaw should be relaxed, and you should mostly breathe normally except for the slight closing of your throat. Now, as you get more advanced, what I'd like you to do is work on closing your throat at a lower level. In other words, initially you can close your throat a little bit with your tongue. You're not completely closing your throat. You're closing it off a little bit with your tongue, the back of your tongue, by elevating it a little bit. Eventually, you can use your larynx to close your throat a little bit. Now, this is more advanced and it will take a little more time to do. In the meantime, Time. Don't worry about it. In the meantime, you can use your tongue to close your throat. Now, there's some schools of thought that teach that it must be done from the larynx only. And I want to tell you that this can take years to develop, and it is absolutely not necessary in order to do this technique correctly. You can, over time, work on closing off lower parts of your throat, but that is not necessary. Your depth of breath and the pace at which you breathe should be normal. So you're not taking an extra deep breath. You're not exhaling an extra amount of air. You're just breathing normally, except for the fact that your throat is slightly closed. One of the best ways to ensure that you're doing this correctly is to keep your neck straight. Don't hunch over and don't lean too far back. Just keep your neck straight. That means sitting up straight with your shoulders back and your neck should be straight, going straight up from your shoulders. Your mouth is open, but only a little bit. If you find that this irritates your throat, you can put a little honey in your throat. In fact, you can eat a little honey. This will help to soothe your throat. And realize that you're not doing this excessively. If you feel lightheaded at all, just stop doing it. All right, let's take a little break now. I want to make sure that you're with me, that you're paying attention and that you're learning something. So what I want you to do right now is if you're driving and you can pull over, go ahead and do that. If you're not driving, then you can definitely do this. You can take out a piece of paper and you can write down five things that you've learned so far from what I've said, five things that resonated with you. Now, 
I want you to keep in mind, they don't even have to be five things that I said. Maybe you got some good ideas from what I said. Maybe I said something and your brain took it and blew it up a million times and came up with all kinds of wonderful, amazing possibilities based on what I said. If that's the case, then feel free to write that down. I just want you to write down five things, whether they came from me or they're just thoughts that came in your head. Five things that have come to you so far, either from me saying them or from you thinking them, as a result of listening to this program so far. So as I'm silent, I'm going to give you ample time now. I want you to write down five things, five thoughts that you have as a result of listening to this program so far. Do this now. Okay, do you have your five things? If not, go ahead and finish them up. Five things, write them down. So I'm going to move forward now. Let's take those five things that you have written down and I want you to elaborate on them. For example, if you have an insight, insight number one, that I should change blank about myself, whatever it may be, I want you to elaborate on that. Whatever you've written down for point number one, something that's come to you during listening to this program, I want you to elaborate on that now as I'm silent. Good. And now I want you to take point number two and elaborate on that. What was the second point that you wrote down and how can you enhance this idea? I want you to make it real for yourself because I want you to have, after you finish this program, something you can use. So on point number two, elaborate on it. Consider what you wrote down as point number two, the foundation. Now build a house on it. Go ahead and write down something now as I'm silent. Good. Now you're getting some momentum. Now for point three. Point number three that you wrote down, something that came to you as you listened to this program, I want you to elaborate on point number three as I'm silent. Good. Now take point number four, the fourth point that you wrote down, something that came to you while you're listening to this program. I want you to elaborate on point number four as I'm silent. Great. Last but not least, point number five. Take point number five and elaborate on it as I'm silent. Good. So now you have something that you can take with you after this program. You have those five points that you elaborated on, and you can use them after this program's over. So let's continue on with the information now.